All right. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for coming to our Packing 101 webinar today. Uh, my name is Alyssa Emerson. I am going to be your MC today. I am student staff with uh, Wayne State Housing. I've been working here for about a year and a half, and I'm really excited to get to talk to you guys today and help you out with the packing process. So real quick, uh, we're just going to have all of the student staff and professional staff in the call. Just introduce yourself real quick. Um, your name, the year you are at Wayne State, if you're a student, obviously, and then what your role is at Wayne State. So we can start with the student staff. I can go first. Hi, everyone. My name is Hayden Johnson. I'm a junior studying political science and anthropology. Um, I'm, an, I'm a resident advisor here in Chatsworth, and then this will be my second year as a resident advisor. Hi, everyone. My name is Beth Me. I'm a senior studying criminal justice and minoring in pre-law philosophy. Um, yeah. Oh, my position during the school year is senior desk assistant of Anthony Wayne Drive Apartments. Hi, everyone. My name is Lakshmi Palani Uppin. Um, I'm studying political science and I'm minoring in pre-law philosophy and I'm going into my senior year and I am a resident advisor at University Tower going into my second year as an RA. All right. And then whichever pro staff wants to go first. I'm Debbie Michael. I am the assignments coordinator, and you cannot see me, but I am here. Hi, my name is Annabelle. I am a community director over at University Tower and Thompson Hole, and I've been here for almost two months. Hello, everyone. My name is Blake Eisenachel. I am a community director for Towers Residential Suites. Hello, my name is Twan Stinson. I am one of the community directors for Anthony Wayne Drive Apartments, and I've been here about nine months now. All right, so just as a review, you should have gotten these dates in several emails from us, but our move-in dates for this year, um, Thursday, August 24th is the first year transfer and living learning community student move in day. So if you fall into one of those three categories or a couple of those categories, you will be moving in on August 24th. And then Saturday, August 26th is our move in day for all upper class students. So be sure to keep an eye on your Wayne State email for updates on move in times. Um, and yeah, just don't forget these move in dates. <laughs> So really quickly, we're going to go through items to bring and what not to bring when moving on campus. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys have questions about this, just kind of the nitty gritty, what is and isn't allowed. So just to go through the list real quick, you can find this list on our website, housing.wayne.edu, if you forget anything from this presentation or need to go back and reference anything. So things that you can bring include an alarm clock, area rug or carpeting, extra long bed linens. Our beds are twin XL size. Um, blankets, pillows, camera, shoes and hangers, TV and coax cable, computer with a surge protector and ethernet cord, school supplies, cleaning supplies, standing floor lamp, extension cords and power strips, first aid kit, sewing kit, flashlight, iron and ironing board, laundry basket, detergent and fabric softener bag just to take to the laundry rooms, toiletries and medications, toilet paper, paper towels, towels and washcloths, umbrella, um, any posters or photos or decorations, removable wall adhesive to stick them to the wall. So posters hung on walls must be hung with removable wall adhesive. So no nails or anything like that. Shower curtain with the little hooks or rings to put them on the rod. Um, refrigerators less than five cubic feet. And then things that you are not allowed to bring on campus include candles, space heaters, oil lamps, deep freezers, um, alcohol, drugs, or tobacco products, crock pots, George Foreman grills, halogen lamps, toasters, fireworks, air conditioners, subwoofers, barber chairs, wall-mounted TVs, washers and dryers, hoverboards and electric scooters, hot pots, fog machines, electric skillets, electric blankets, incense, firearms or weapons, Wi-Fi routers, because you do have a Wi-Fi router in your room, um, pets other than non-flesh-eating fish, water beds, hot iron curling iron stoves, alcohol bottles for display, and any other drug paraphernalia. 
So now that we know what is and isn't okay to have on campus, we're going to have one of our community directors, Annabelle, just kind of break down her move to campus since she's, like she mentioned, just a few months ago, she made the move. So she's going to kind of talk about things that she did and didn't bring to campus to give everybody an idea of what some things that you might need and might want to leave at home. Thank you, Alyssa. So once again, my name is Annabelle and I've been here for just a few months, but I have quite a bit of experience living on campus. I started my journey at a small school in Florida that had a four year live on requirement, which meant that I would, I had to live on campus throughout all the four years of my education and I lived in the quad, which means it was me and three other roommates. So as you can imagine, the space was a little bit limited and we had to be very, very mindful of the things we packed. We also had a communal style bathroom. So we shared it with a couple of other rooms, which, uh, which means that again, we had to be really mindful of how we pack things, of what we have with us and things like that. And I was assigned at the time three random roommates. So we were not able to coordinate previously up until a lot closer to the move-in date when we got each other's information. And that was helpful, setting up that communication to making sure that we did not bring doubles of the things we did not need because it was such a limited space. So for example, a vacuum cleaner, usually you would only need one per living space. So we were able to make sure we did not have four vacuum cleaners just hanging out in the corner. And I put down some of the notes of the things I'm glad I did and things I wish I did or did not do. So multiple sets of bedding, being able to change your bed sheets and make the room look cute. And at the same time, you don't have to run laundry every single week or multiple times a month just to wash your bed sheets to be able to change them. Because once the classes kick in, meetings, clubs, hanging out with friends, that can be really time consuming. So the less loads of laundry, laundry you can do, the better, while still main, like having a clean space. Uh, I had mine and my roommate's families plan to stay for a few hours after we have moved in just so they can help us pack and organize the spaces so we can have as many hands on deck as possible up until the guest policy kicked in and we're able to get our spaces organized within just a couple of hours and be able to coordinate with each other. It did get a little crowded, but it was really helpful in being efficient especially because you want to jump into all the fun activities as soon as possible. Uh, I double-checked my moving instructions to make sure I did not miss my moving time, which I'm glad I did the night before because I had the wrong time down for my last name. So really, really glad I double-checked and did not cause any chaos. Uh, and then in my specific case, because it was a regular rest hall style room. It was not an apartment style. I did not bring a TV right away because I personally did not watch TV often and having four people in the room, it was easier for us to watch our shows and movies on our personal laptops because it is something you can order once you have moved in and settled in. But at the same time, if you have an apartment, I know you usually would prefer to have a TV in the living room so you can play some music and watch shows with your roommates. So just seeing whichever like living style you will have and wherever your preference is. But some of the things I shouldn't have brought a bunch of shirts because I got so many at the welcome events, orientations, when I moved in and then I ended up wearing my school shirts because they were easy to mix and match and were a little bit more fun. So unless you have a very specific preference or style, I will not pack too many t-shirts because I promise you, you will get a bunch. Um, and I brought a shoe rack, which in hindsight, I didn't really need because I didn't bring that many shoes and they would have been fine staying on the floor and it took up a lot of space in the car when we had to come up. So that's something I wish I had waited on and either bought it online later if I felt like I needed it or just didn't get one at all. Since again, with that limited space, it was a challenge trying to find somewhere to put it for something that I didn't use as often. And some of the fun suggestions 
I had, like, I loved having the carpet or a rug because it makes the space a lot cozier and homier. You're able to, like, hang out on the floor if you like, and it just brings the space together. But there's often so, so bulky. So if you're able, I would order it a little bit later after you have moved in and settle in and see how your space is looking like. And just give it a few weeks once everyone is ready to go. Uh, start packing as early as possible. I packed the night before and I was exhausted on the day of moving in, especially because they put us into orientation and welcome events almost as soon as we finished moving in and I had very low energy. So if you can start early, that would be really, really helpful and your future self will thank you because it will be chaotic and exhausting either way. So trying to save a little bit of stress will make it a lot smoother. Um, again, if possible, talk to your roommates to avoid doubles, especially if you do have a limited space. You don't want 50,000 pots and pans and plates when you can just share. But it is important to have that conversation to make, like making sure everyone has what they need and utilizing the space you have and making it as homey as possible. And for a coffee maker, unless you already use one on a daily basis, they get so bulky and I used my meal plan for coffee almost every single day. I didn't have to worry about the equipment or having to wash my mugs as often because I would just stop at the dining hall or the Starbucks on campus and just get my cup of coffee on the way to class. So unless that's something you already use, and I see it a lot in like packing lists, I would not bring it. I would just wait like, you know, again a couple of weeks, see if you end up using the meal plan as often, or would you prefer to have something in your own space? But yeah, that's pretty much all I have. Just try to pack as early as possible and it will not be perfect. Be flexible. Moving is always chaotic, but so, so exciting. So just do your best and take lots of pictures. I'm sure your family and friends are really bittersweet to leave you on campus. So have something fun to look back to and do like my first year at school and my last year at school comparison. All right, awesome. Thank you, Annabelle. Annabelle is also my outfit twin today. If you guys haven't noticed, we look the same. Um, so next we're gonna have some of our student staff kind of talk about things that they brought to campus that they like highly recommend bringing to campus um, and things that they brought to campus that maybe they wouldn't recommend or that they wouldn't recommend bringing. So I'm actually going to go first. Um, every first year student that I meet, I always tell them that my biggest recommendation is to buy a mattress topper. It's a little bit of memory. I can see everybody nodding. Yeah, if you know, you know. Um, it's a little bit of memory foam that goes on top of your bed. You can get one anywhere from like a couple hundred dollars to the one I have now is just $25. Um, so you don't necessarily need to invest a bunch of money into it, but that little bit of memory foam is going to make a huge difference. So I, if you take, I mean, I hope you take a lot away from this presentation, but my biggest takeaway for you would be to invest in a mattress topper for sure. And then my what not to bring kind of goes somewhat hand in hand with what Annabelle said about shoes. My first year, I feel like I brought almost every pair of shoes that I owned to campus thinking that I was going to wear all of them when I really didn't need like three pairs of high heels since we go to school somewhere that's cold for most of the year, things like that. So I would recommend bringing like, you know, a pair of gym shoes, your winter shoes or boots, some cute shoes for presentations, or if you have an event, but you don't need to bring 15 to 20 pairs of shoes when you move on campus. I promise. You'll be fine. Um, so now I'm going to hand it over to Hayden, Bethany, and Lakshmi. So in terms of what to bring on campus, I think so far everyone who's spoken has covered a lot of the bases. Mm -hmm. um, but I think I, for me, what was personally useful was like storage bins. I had a, like a lot of like clothes and stuff like that and the space is like didn't have like a lot of like drawers and stuff like that so I brought my own like little storage bin so I can keep everything organized um I would also say that um I brought a lot of decor because the room was kind of you know boring and stuff so I brought a lot of like photos and like wall decor and stuff like that just so it felt you know at home um and a lot of snacks uh food is very good to keep on deck like under your bed or like you know to the <laughs> side and stuff like that so that's what I would recommend <laughs> okay so when I first moved in I live in Toronto so I'm 
pretty far away. And if you live far away, I would say don't bring luggages because if you don't go back home as often, it's going to be under your bed and you can't store anything under your bed other than the luggages. So just bring like cardboard boxes where you could break them down and, you know, throw them in the dumpster. Also, um, I wish I had an iron too, you know, most of the time you're folding your clothes and unless like you're like a master folder, you're, you're always going to get wrinkles. So <laughs> always have an iron. Um, and also I, I did bring a printer, but there's no use for it. Honestly, there's printers in every building. There's printers in the library. So don't bring your printer. It's just bulky. It takes too much space. I know for me, I lived in towers my first year in a four person suite. Um, so definitely echoing what Annabelle said of communicating ahead of time, because I think all four of us ended up bringing a mini fridge, even though we could have ended up just sharing and saving a lot of space in an already pretty tight room. Um, one more, one other thing too, that is good. Um, a rug, especially if you're in like towers or Gafari where there's tile flooring or like mm -hmm. the linoleum flooring. Um, it's good just so you're not walking on, especially in the morning. I don't know if it's just a me thing, but walking on like the cold floor <laughs> feels really weird. So just having like that rug in the room, it also helps with like the homey feeling too. Um, another thing too, having like stuff that you can hang inside of your closet for additional like storage space. Um, I know I use like these plastic containers that I could stack up inside of my wardrobe um, for my shoes, just so I didn't have to buy like a big bulky shoe rack um yeah also like air fresheners like there's it's a college dorm room it's a pretty tight space so especially if you have people over to like just keep it cleanly keep it smelling good then people would want to come back too so mm -hmm. just good tips all around also i would say a brita filter too mm -hmm. any water filter yeah so yeah Do any pro staff have anything that they want to add to the list? No, you're all solid. I think we did a good yeah. job. Yeah, you guys are you guys are doing great. All right. Um, so next, we're actually going to open up the floor to any questions um, from any of you in the call. So you can either put your question in the chat box and we can read it off, or you can actually unmute your microphone and ask your question, and we will do our best to answer. Can you bring a microwave? Yes, you can bring a microwave. Um, I would recommend, like Hayden said, that might be a communication point so that all four of you don't bring a microwave because you may not need four, but you absolutely can have a microwave, yes. So is non-flesh eating fish the only pet you can bring or can you approve another animal? So as for just having any like pet in the dorm, you can have um, flesh eating fish. However, if you're talking about like an emotional support animal or a service animal, you can have those as well, but you need to get them approved through SDS first. And those can be pretty much any type of animal. Is there room under the bed to store a storage bin? Do you know the measurements from the bed to the floor? I actually do have the measurements from the bed to the floor, believe it or not. Give me one second to pull it up. Do you think freshmen need cars? Oh, sorry. The, <laughs> you can answer that while I look this one up. For the storage under the bed while she's getting the measurements too, um, Towers and Gafari, you're able to loft the beds, but for Chatsworth, you're not able to. Um, so and, just Anthony keep, and Anthony Wayne Drive too. Um, so just keep that in mind when you're looking for like under the bed storage options too, because you might not be able to fit everything under there. Right. So um, Towers, Gafari, and Thompson Home, you can loft the beds. Um, the bed height with the bed all the way up on the first loft. So if you didn't technically loft it high, it's just the regular. There are two feet, five inches underneath. So that's Towers and Gafari. Chatsworth and Anthony Wayne Drive, the space underneath the bed is going to be one foot, eight <laughs> inches. So it's not a whole bunch of space under there. Um, and then Thompson's beds are a little different. You get one foot, 10 inches. That's if you don't choose to loft the bed though. So the laundry machines, there's always 
um, laundry machines on campus. It's a dollar fifty that you pay through pay range. You could use quarters or you could download the app and just put your card on the app and just like swipe it. It's a dollar fifty per wash and a dollar fifty per each dry cycle as well. Yeah, we use an app called Pay Range to do it, so it's um, all through Bluetooth. I'll answer the question about um, Anthony Wayne Drive since I'm the community director. Yay. Um, so, yes, the apartments have refrigerators, microwave, and dishwasher. So, you're all set. And to hop back onto the, the first year's need cars, I'm not sure about our student staff perspective, but I did not bring the car on campus my first year just because like paying for a parking pass was an additional expense. And my campus was really similar in size to Wayne State's. It was fairly easy to walk from my like rest hall to the classrooms. It was often faster than driving and looking for parking as well, but I'm not sure if students have a different experience. I mean, at least for me, I have my car on campus because I do work off campus as well. Um, but other than that, you can get to things fairly quickly by just walking or if you take like a Mogo bike or the Q line as well, things are fairly close to campus. There's also scooters on campus mm -hmm. <laughs> and the free bikes. <laughs> yeah, I would agree with Hayden for maneuvering around campus you don't necessarily need a car i have one for like if i decide to go home for the weekend that sort of thing but it's definitely not something that you need to have um does chatsworth have any closet space for each person in a four-person suite i can answer that one um so in chatsworth it's either the four or six person suites with two residents in each bedroom um so each resident will have their own half of a closet um and you'll be able to see that when you walk in the room there's a divider in the middle um, that it's split up by. All right. Um, is there a chair with each desk? Yes, there is a chair that comes with each desk. Um, University Tower Apartments also do have a refrigerator in the unit. Um, why can we not bring an electric scooter? Because it's a fire hazard and the battery can catch on fire and that would not be very good. And I have seen it happen at my previous institution. So trust me, the cleanup afterwards was not worth it. <laughs> I didn't know that, Annabelle. That's so scary. Okay. Um, in Chatsworth, what does the floor kitchenette include? So every, I can, again, I can take <laughs> Um, For the, each floor has a kitchenette on floors two through nine. Um, so each kitchenette will have a stove, an oven, a microwave, and then a full-size refrigerator that has a freezer as well. And all of them are identical. All right. Can we leave it locked up outside? I'm assuming that's um, pertaining to an electric scooter. Um, if you want to risk it, you know, you could, you could all, you always have the option to, but. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Are we able to come either the day before or early the day of move-in day to clean the room? So we do not have this. Unfortunately, the day and time that you're set to move in is the first time that you can come into the room unless you have a special accommodation. Like I know some athletic teams move in early, things like that. How good is the lighting in the towers? Should I bring additional lamps? So um, Hayden can probably talk on this too. When I lived in towers, I did personally bring extra lamps just because I didn't feel like there was a whole bunch of lighting, especially when it gets dark out, if you're studying late at night. Yeah, I used like the standing floor lamps from, I think I got it from like Target for pretty cheap. Um, but I think I have one in my living room and then I also have one in my bedroom as well. Just because the lighting that come that's like in against like attached to the wall <laughs> Um, is it always, it's a little harsh. So it was just better for my eyes too, because I was doing a lot of homework and like studying a lot. So it was pretty, it was a lot easier to use the lamp for light. Yeah. It's kind of like a fluorescent light, if you know what I mean. So it can be kind of harsh, especially late at night when you've been in class looking at fluorescent lights all day. Right. You could um, always buy another, like a LED light bulb too, instead of the LED strips because the LED strips can damage the walls and you might get charged when you move out. So just buy the LED lights. 
Yeah. While we're on the topic of things taking paint off the walls, a trick that I've learned is if you're going to use like a command strip or if you're going to try to put the LED lights up, if you put a strip of painter's tape on the wall before you put on the strips, when you go to take off the command strip or the LED lights at the end of the year, it will damage the tape, but not the paint on the wall because painter's tape is designed so that it won't take the paint off of the wall. So that's what I've done while I've been here and I never had a problem with it. Um, I know several students who do as well. It's like one extra step, so it takes a little bit longer, but it's always better to be safe than sorry because if you move out at the end of the year and you have a bunch of paint damage, you're not going to be happy having to pay a fee. Uh, what about bicycles? Can we store bicycles in the Chatsworth first floor or do we have to keep them in our room? So not on the first floor, but there is a bike rack right outside the building that you're able to store your bike at. So it's right outside the door. Um, but it's not inside the building. I think there are bike racks outside of each building. I think you're right. Yeah. I don't know if I missed this earlier, but are there any more tips for out of state students? Bethany, do you want to take this one? Um, the luggage tip for sure, because there's like five luggages under my bed right now that just takes up so much space. So bring card, pack everything in cardboard boxes or something you could break down. Um, also try to get here as early as you can, because a lot of people who live close by, you know, their parents drop them off like right after work. So the earlier you come, there's going to be like carts available for you and you don't have to rush and wait for the elevators because the elevators take forever when you're moving in because everyone's trying to use them and make sure you bring a couple of helpers to help you unpack as well. So you could take anything that you don't need in your room like back home with them and yeah also the things you can buy online especially if you live alone or you don't know your roommate you can get in touch with them just wait a couple days after you move in and then decide what you need instead of just buying everything and having your room you know cluttered so that's yeah. a big thing and I can jump in a little bit as well, since when I was coming here for graduate school, I had to make the move from Florida to Michigan via the train. And those vacuum sealed clothing bags, for like bed sheets and any bulky, like winter jackets, if you want to bring any, save so much space. Like your boxers or luggage or whatever you bring is going to be pretty heavy, but space-wise, you can fit so much more and they're not that expensive. I got a set of like... 20 or so in different sizes for like 16 18 dollars of amazon yeah the packing cubes now they're popular so use those um and also when you're moving out if you every time you like you go home just bring something so you're not you're not carrying everything back home again because throughout the year you're going to collect some more you know personal items so I want to add something as well to that being that, you know, you'll be moving from Alabama to Michigan. Please be sure that you're packing maybe a few hoodies, sweatshirts, things like that. Um, if you've never been to Michigan or never lived in Michigan, it's a totally different climate. So <laughs> I would, uh, definitely recommend that. I mean, when you get here, it'll be August, September, so it'll still be kind of warm. But we have days like today where it might rain, it might get a little cold. Michigan's weather is kind of interesting, so... That's what I would recommend for that. Yeah, for sure. I would say overestimate the winter because when there's two feet of snow on the ground and you have to walk 10 minutes to your class, you would rather have that really heavy coat that might look a little bit silly, but everyone else will be there. <laughs> All right. Are, are the university towers, oh, as the university towers are unfurnished, can we bring an under the storage bed? Did you mean, I'm not sure if they meant to say bin or bed well you can bring a bin but i don't know what under the storage bed means if you could elaborate a little yeah all right can you give some information about the heating system at anthony wayne drive so each room has its own what is it thermo thermometer is that? Thermo yeah. <laughs> that one okay yeah so you could adjust it you could always have like the fan running um you could put it to cool you could put it to heat each room gets its own thermostat well, that in university tower it's a little bit different um because in terms of the thermostat you get an option of heat or cold and like they switch it like 
halfway through the semester, like based on the temperature outside. So like during the summer, they'll only have AC. So you can either put it to like high or low. So I would recommend bringing a fan um, just so you have it in case like you like, you know, a colder climate in your room. Um, but yeah, we don't have like adjustable um, in, in the apartments in that apartments, but everywhere else, I think you do. Also in Anthony Wayne, um, the windows are fairly small. So if you're also like cooking, you open up the window and when it gets humid, you know, it's not too much airflow. So if you want to bring a fan, maybe, but don't bring it on move in. Just wait and see if you do need it before you buy one. For sure. All right. In Chatsworth, do we need additional lamps in each bedroom and the shared area? And then they also asked floor lamps or desk lamps. Um... I wouldn't say you need them because the lighting is fairly sufficient. Um, for me, I know I do a lot of homework at my desk in my room there. Um, so I have a desk lamp just so I could turn off my overhead light just because it can be kind of harsh if you're sitting there looking at a computer with harsh light too. Um, so I have a desk lamp and I also have a, like a color changing LED light for my living room just because it looks cool. Um, and then it's not as harsh again as the light that comes with the room. Um, so you could really bring either, um, but I would say maybe just try and see how you like the lights first. Um, maybe bring the desk lamp, but then you could always consider getting a floor lamp later on too, if you decide that you want a different option. Absolutely. All right. Where do we park for move-in day at Chatsworth? I can kind of, I mean, Chatsworth and most of the other residence halls is probably going to be about the same. So what they usually do, anyone can correct me if I'm wrong, by the way, but what I remember is usually they have little like drop off zones in front of the building. So that's kind of like park, unload your things like you're not going to be sitting there for 15, 20 minutes. Um, I do know that there's usually street parking and structure parking available as well. I believe on move-in day that they keep the street clear. So there might not be street parking, but they'll just have the drop off zones. And then once you get all your stuff out, then you'll be able to park in the structure to then bring your stuff in. Um, I remember last year they had the street, they had like signs up on the street for each building of where like each building's residents would park to drop their stuff off and then move the car to bring the stuff in as well. Also, if you're ever confused, there are moving helpers on the day of moving that could direct you to. So you're never lost. There's always people around town. Yeah, they'll all be wearing matching shirts, so you should be able to pick them out. <laughs> the um, parking structure that you would be parking in would be parking structure two, which is right behind Anthony Wayne Drive Apartments. So it's very close to the residence halls. Um, do students get discounts on Detroit transportation like queue lines and buses? Hey, Alyssa, can we yeah. just first tell them that they have to go to the Welcome Center before they move into the buildings? So just tell them the, like the whole list of how the day runs. Okay, yeah. So um, Thompson Home, I believe, is different. I believe, Thompson, you do go directly to the building. I could be wrong on that. Correct? Okay. Um, so the first thing that you're going to do... And um, University... and uh, Sorry, and University Tower. Sorry, sorry. Because I, <laughs> no, I noticed there's some University Tower people in here. You're good, Debbie. Just, just jump right in. Sorry. Uh, so... The, if you are not University Tower or Thompson Home, you're going to start your day off at the Welcome Center. Um, when you come to the Welcome Center, they're going to look to see that you've completed the Canvas course modules. I believe that just went live today. Um, so that just has to be completed. Oh, not yet. Never mind. You'll get an email when it goes live. And it's just kind of like rules and regulations, like everything you need to know for housing, basically. So they'll check to see that. They'll check to see the, you know, confirm your room assignment and then you will get your packet with your room keys, the like room condition report forms that you have to sign. And then from there, you will be directed to go to your building. Um, so you'll go to the Welcome Center at your assigned move-in time. And then from there, you will go over to whichever building you'll be living in. And then you can go to the drop-off zone, drop off your things, um, your parent or whoever can park in the structure, and then you can go ahead and start moving in. And we have free parking for students and parents bringing their stuff to campus so they can park at the welcome center for the initial getting your uh keys and all that good stuff and then you'll move your car and your stuff to the drop-off zone and then park in the parking structure two behind anthony wayne drive apartments so there'll be a ton of signage on campus directing you so you won't get lost like 
Alyssa said that there are a ton of helpers helping with movement. So like, just ask questions and we'll be able to help you. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So do students get discounts on Detroit transportation, like Q line or buses? Um, yes, we do. Um, the bus system, I believe, is free with your one card because I've done that one. Um, has anybody in this group used the Q line with your one card? The Q is also free. Yeah. And, oh. <laughs> sorry. And then answer the next one. It also comes with, there's an app you can get that tells you when it's coming and how long it takes. And I believe you need a bus ticket for the Detroit buses, uh, but you kind of get a free. Don't quote me if I'm wrong. I haven't been on this. <laughs> I can I can talk a little too because I like my public transportation. So the queue is just free as is. You don't even need to show one card unless something changes. For the buses, you download an app that lets you purchase the bus tickets. And if you sign up with your like access ID and your student information, you're able to purchase up to three free tickets per day, and each one lasts four hours. So you activate it, it lasts for four hours, you show it when you get on the bus, and you're good to go. Hmm. Thank you, Annabelle. I know the MoGo bikes are also free. You just have to use, I believe, your access ID and password. I could be wrong, but you do. You are able to use those for free as well. All right. Um, does Amazon deliver to Chatsworth? Amazon does deliver to Chatsworth. Amazon delivers to any of our residence halls or apartments. Also, um, we do take deliveries from like those type of carriers. But let's say your parents want to drop off something for you. We can't tell them that we'll take it at the desk because that goes against FERPA as well. You can also Grubhub or DoorDash or anything like that. Um, can you talk about the thermostat at Chatsworth? Can we control it? Should we bring fans? The thermostats in Chatsworth are the same as the ones in Anthony Wayne Drive Apartments and Towers where they're suite controlled. So all four or six people in the room um, will be under one thermostat. And it's easy. same thing, heating and cooling that you could change yourself. Maybe you would consider bringing a fan if your roommates maybe want it a little warmer than you would like it, and or if you like sleeping with the fan on at night, maybe for the noise. Um, but maybe just I would say communicate with your roommate ahead of time or roommates or whoever you're living with, um, and just figure out maybe kind of what temperature they might want to keep the room at, um, just so you can kind of plan ahead. All right. Can you fit a futon under the bed in towers if it's lofted? Yes, you can. Could I change the flat in the university towers if I'm not able to live with my roommates, if you're not comfortable living with your roommates? If yes, do I need the approval of my existing roommates? Debbie, can yes. You yes, you do need the um, approval of your existing roommates, and that is because the uh, university tower is charged different than the halls. The halls is each person, the apartment. Uh, University Tower is just like any other apartment that you would get off campus or anything, and it's divided by the number of people in the room. So, <clears throat> like, if you're going to leave, that might lead the other people to have to pay more. So, yes, they do have to um, agree to it. And we do have room change periods once each semester. So, for fall, room change period will be, I believe, the second or the third week in September. And then in winter, I believe it's going to be January, although we talked about maybe having it earlier, but just let's just say January. But always, always, always watch your uh, Wayne State email address because that's where all the information will go. All right. Thank you, Debbie. Um, where is the Welcome Center? The Welcome Center is Woodward and Warren, correct? Yeah. 42 West Warren Street is the address. Check your email. All of that communication is in your email. He's got and, the address and everything. Yes. <laughs> um, if you bring helpers with you for move-in day, do they have to sign in or are there any procedures for them? No, there is not. 
we just ask that uh, they don't stay the night. <laughs> uh, where do we park for the Welcome Center? I'm not sure about this one. So there is a parking structure behind the bookstore that is free of charge for students moving in on the day of their move in. If I cannot go to my assigned move in time, can I attend the open move in from 6 to 9 p.m.? Yes, you can. We encourage students to come during their move in time, of course, uh, but yes, you can. Just so that everybody's not trying to move in at once. Correct. Uh, I do also want to say, please pack a ton of patience. On move-in day, it is, I don't want to say chaotic, but it's a lot happening with all the people that are excited to move on to campus. Uh, if you have carts or like dollies or anything like that, I would definitely bring those because we have a limited number of carts on campus and everybody wants to use the cart and it doesn't move that quick. So it's probably best to bring your own transportation of your things and bring some people with you to help you move in. It'll be a good, exciting time. I know when I moved in, I had like a special little dolly kind of that I put my mini fridge on. It had like two handles, it was metal, and it was easier than having to like lift the mini fridge up and put it into the cart that kind of has like high walls on it. So if you have something like that, I would recommend bringing that as well. Yeah. All right. While we wait to see if there's any more questions, does anybody, um, any staff in the call have any like tried and true tips for move-in that kind of helped you guys when you moved in or managing like roommate communication, anything like that? Um, I would say definitely try to talk to your roommate prior to moving in. That's one of the biggest things for me. And you do have access to see who your what your roommates' names are in the housing self-service portal um, to be able to try. I know I tried Instagram. I think I looked <laughs> at Facebook to try and find my roommates. And only out of the other three roommates I had, only one of them I couldn't find. Um, so I'll take two out of three. I think there's some questions in the chat. Yeah, for sure. So when do we get our one card for access to the building? So at your orientation for like new student or transfer student orientation, they should talk to you about the one card process, um, taking a picture, uploading it to your Academica account. Typically, it takes two, three, sometimes four weeks for your one card to come in. It'll be mailed to your house. So um, you definitely want to make sure you do that. If you haven't started the process now, Yet now might be a good time to do it just so that you make sure you have that because your one card is going to be at least the key to get into the building. I believe Gafari Hall and University Towers are the buildings that use brass keys to get into your room, but the rest of them will use a one card to get into your room. So you want to make sure that you've got that for sure. We're asking students if they have not done that process of getting their one card in the mail by August 4th, then to ask for it to be picked up at the office the one card office, which is at the Welcome Center as well. Yeah, we just want to make sure you have that on move-in day. Correct. How many outlets are in the room in Chatsworth? I'm trying to think. I believe there's at least one on every wall, maybe. But I would say it's always a good rule of thumb to probably at least bring uh, one like power strip extension cord mm -hmm. type of thing, um, just because you're going to want to plug in like your laptop, your phone, and like if you bring a fan or something like that too. Um, just to have all that stuff kind of plugged in. Just be mindful of how many things and out and like appliances, if you bring anything, are being plugged into the walls just so we don't blow any fuses. Yeah, in addition to the power strips, if you can find extra long like phone charging cords or extra long cords for anything, that's also helpful because sometimes the outlets are in odd places and you might want your phone to be, you know, like right by your bed when you're sleeping or whatever. Especially if you're living in Gafari or Towers and you have your bed lofted um, to have, I think I had the 10 foot charging cable just so like it could reach because my, the plug was on the, like towards the floor. So having it reach up was helpful too. All right. What are the best ways to store and move laundry? I feel like everybody probably has a different opinion on this. There's many different ways to do it. Hayden, do you? Um, 
I think what they're asking is like, bring it to campus. I would say for things that are on the hangers, I saw it on TikTok when I was moving in, um, but you like put the trash bag and then you cut like a little hole. In, oh, so everyone else saw it too. Okay. <laughs> um, but where you just cut like a little hole in the top. So the tops of the hangers can poke out so you could still hang it up. Um, and then you could either tie or like, mm-hmm. yeah, tie off the bottom of the bag. Um, just so that your clothes aren't getting like dirty, just in case like the bag drops or like it's going to go in the mm-hmm. cart. Um, just so you know that like your clothes are still clean and not being like exposed to the elements outside. Um, and even like smaller things that could go in like the storage bins that you're going to keep in your room. Um, if you're able to get it in those storage bins before you bring it in, like I know like the Target, like clear shelf, um, like little plastic things I kept like shirts and I think I kept like socks and stuff like that in um just, it might be good just to have it already in there ready to go it might save you a little bit of room too all right somebody said I made a group chat with my roommate by finding their WSU emails in my housing portal yes on your self-service portal it should show the student's uh name and their email or if not the email you can use their name to look up their email in the housing system like in the outlook email if that makes sense um, do you know the measurement of the closets at Chatsworth? I have it. So <laughs> <laughs> we get a lot of these questions, especially from the parent Facebook page. So from the bar to the floor is 61 inches, and that's the height. And then the width is 49 and a half. And then from the bar to the ceiling is 38 inches. I hope that's helpful. Wow. I know. We're on it today. Good job, guys. <laughs> all right. You mentioned mattress toppers. Do all beds have mattresses? Yes, all beds do come with mattresses. Um, as an international student, if I haven't started the one card process yet, can I ask not to mail the one card so I can just pick it up when I read? Yeah. So like Mario mentioned, um, you can have your one card. You can request to pick it up at the welcome center. So on move-in day, or if you come to campus before move-in day, you could pick it up at the welcome center when you do everything else. Laundry in the room to laundry in the room and back. What do you recommend? Okay, that's how I took the question. Um, I'm sorry. (laughs) No, you're good. That was a really good tip too. Um, So I think everybody kind of does this differently. Um, Some people have like the plastic laundry, like baskets. I've seen people do it with a lid where you can roll it. I personally have a lot of like duffel bags in my room. So I'll put mine in a duffel bag just because it's easier for me to like carry to and from the laundry room. Um, But I feel like everybody kind of has like a different way of doing it. So whatever's going to work for you. I don't know if anyone else has any like strong feelings about the way that you transport your laundry. Um, I have one of those like wagons that you just like you know and my comforter is pretty big so I always like fold all my laundry and I just carry it with my wagon so I don't have to like carry everything and make multiple trips so definitely get a wagon too if you can all right the Chatsworth closet measurements is that the entire closet or half closet I believe that would be for the half closet Correct. there's like a little wall space separating the two it's per student side So that measurement that he gave would be like the measurements of your individual closet. Correct. The measure, oh, you just put that in the chat. My bad, I didn't see that. The measurements are per student, one side. All right, do we have any other questions? Did anybody have anything to add about the roommate communication conversation that we were having earlier? Measurements for Towers Closet. Mario, do you have those? You're the first to ask that question. What I will do is you can send me an email and I'll respond tomorrow with that that measurement. Uh, My email is mario at wayne.edu and we'll get that to you. That's going to be tricky because we don't, it's like different per room, right? No, it's the oh, uh, Powers has like the little wardrobe. I think yeah. I could be wrong, but I feel like it might be bigger than Chatsworth. It is. The Towers wardrobes are actually more spacious than you would think of in a, like a traditional dorm room setting. So you'll have at least if you I don't know, I might have a lot of clothes, but like it was a, it was enough space. 
I agree. We'll get you those measurements for sure too. Yeah, email us and I'll, we'll definitely get that to you. What typically happens the Friday after move-in day? So this, uh, actually Thursday is move-in. So Friday is resident orientation, which if they are RAs, they're planning a ton of events for you all to kind of get to know your roommates, uh, hear what some of the rules and regulations about living on campus. And then I, I want to say there's a bonfire in the evening. And we had one this summer, which was pretty cool. I think I came to it and I, I had a good time. I don't know how the students felt, but I, I believe they had a good time as well. Um, I got the party started with burning my own s'more, but it was good. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's a ton of events, stuff happening. And then on Saturday, another group of students move in, move in the upper class students. And then on Sunday is festival and convocation, which is an, another big campus wide uh, event that we do every year. And we're just welcoming everybody back to campus. And then Monday is when the first day of school starts. So uh, you will not be bored. A ton is happening. Uh, uh, yeah, get ready. <laughs> Resident orientation actually is a lot of fun. I did it for the past two years because I live in a living learning community and I personally had a lot of fun doing it. So you won't be disappointed. Um, do you know the measures of the windows for curtains? Um, most of the windows come with blinds, either that you twist or that you pull up and down. Um, I know they have them in towers. Towers and Gafari have like blackout wind blinds. I think all the buildings have some sort of blinds though, correct? Yeah. You wouldn't necessarily need curtains unless I guess you really wanted them to go over the blinds. Um, will there be any deadline for the University Towers housing application? Debbie, can you take this one? Of course. Um, there is there isn't a deadline for any of our housing. However, we assign on a first come, first serve basis. So the late the longer you wait, the more chance there might not be what you want available. Like for instance, at University Tower right now, we just have a very limited amount of two and three bedrooms left. So no, there is no deadline, but you you gotta you gotta get your app in because <laughs> the longer you wait, the, everything's gonna be full. Yeah, that goes for all the residence halls as well. Yeah. Certain room. Is somebody else talking or am I echoing? Okay, sorry, that was weird. Um, it same goes for all the buildings as well. So like very popular room types, like single rooms, those will go quicker than some others. So. Um, definitely fill out the housing application sooner rather than later if you're trying to get a specific building or a specific room type. Just want to let you know if you have any more questions or if you want to learn more about the move-in process, you can visit our housing move-in webpage at housing.wayne.edu slash moving in. For the question in the chat, they can come visit you to drop stuff off. I would just say maybe wait a second because we're going to be doing a lot of things on that first move-in weekend um, with resident orientation that Mario mentioned. Um, so it might be kind of busy, but we'll definitely find time, especially if it's just to drop off things. Um, just work with your RA once you move on campus um, and we'll, oh, sorry, we'll uh, find a time. Yeah, I know typically we get like an agenda for the um, resident orientation with like what time everything's happening on what day. So you could also use that with your student to kind of uh, come up with a time that would work well for both of you. Should we bring notebooks and paper or is it better to buy them at the bookstore? I always I would say, them. yeah, uh -huh. bring your own. Everything mm -hmm. is Mm. Well, bring your own. <laughs> As with any college campus, it's going to be a little yeah. bit <laughs> buying things on campus than buying them off campus. So I always bought mine off campus. But I mean, that's a personal preference. I would look at your classes too, because a lot of classes have everything virtual now. So you may not even need to bring a notebook. Okay, it looks like time is winding down and there's less and less questions. So what I'm going to say, just want to reiterate the move-in dates. Um, oh, it's jumped. Okay. So Thursday, August 24th is our first year transfer and living learning community students moving on to campus. And then Saturday, August 26th, upper class students will be coming onto campus. 
Take it away, Alyssa. So um, if you're able, I would recommend taking a picture of this slide if you're going to be living with us on campus, just so that you have all the information that you need to contact us right here. So you've got our website, our email, our phone number, um, our social media. We would love if you gave us an Instagram follow, but in case right now or later down the road or even halfway through the school year, if you end up having any questions, um, take a picture of the slide so that you know how to reach us and you have all that information in one place. All right. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we can't wait to see you all in the fall or August 24th, which is like less than a month away. So we will talk to you all later. Have a good evening. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Goodbye.